Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. We are told by Jesus and by the prophets and everywhere else to love God. This is the most important thing that we can do. How do we love God? Okay, that's sort of a simple answer. Quickly, John says, we love God by keeping the commandments. Well, actually, it's not all that simple. Because keeping the commandments is important, ultimately important, but how we keep the commandments is more important. Most people who keep all the commandments, not all, but most, do it by rote. They just keep, this is what we have to do, and we will do it this way, and we'll add this rote to it, and that kind of thing to it, and we will keep the commandments. But there's more to it than keeping the commandments like that, by rote. Of course, most major religions uh, keep well, nine of the uh, commandments, some less. So, keeping the commandments is not a problem for them because they don't do it. But for those who are true believers and believe in loving God and the Ten Commandments will keep all the commandments. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says all the way back, time of Moses, you shall love the Lord your God with all your might, with all your soul, <clears throat> and all your heart. With a lot of context. Key word there is love. Last time we talked about the Ahab. How uh, God is love and the seven characteristics of that love. But let's look at it from a different point of view. Love is an all-inclusive affection. It's not, as we've said before, you love God with heart, soul, and might. We get into each of those at another time. He said, but it's an all-inclusive affection embracing not only every other affection proper to its object, but all that is proper to be done in its object. For love spontaneously seeks to please the object. Okay, he says object, it should be person. Spontaneously seeks to love. Just comes out with great power. You want to do this for the person that you love. We, God loves us, and he did all these things for us out of love. Including giving us the commandments. Because the commandments is the best way to live life and life more abundantly. In the case of man to God, it is a native wellspring of voluntary obedience. God does not want people doing things by rote. Oh, the leader says this, we do it that way, that's love. And, you know, it's just kind of, uh, you know, being in, in the army, nothing wrong with being in the army. But you do things step by step. You know, ten chun, forward march. And it, it's great and it's important to do it that way for them. But for us, it's different. It's voluntary obedience. And it's not obedience to do it by rote. It is affection. It is the most personal of all affections. One may fear an event. One may hope for an event. We're afraid of something will happen to us. If we do this, you know, or we do something else, oh, we might get into trouble. Oh, somebody will be watching us. Oh, something bad is going to happen. Uh, one may rejoice in an event, something will happen, say, yay, you know, watching a football game, yay, my team won, or, oh, it's lost. But it is rejoice an event, but one can only love a person, in this case with a capital P, person. It is the tenderest, innermost feeling, the most unselfish the most divine of all affections. That's love. Where we completely forget about ourselves and love God. Yes, we're keeping the commandments. But because we want to. Not because somebody's going to beat us over the head if we don't. You stole something. Off with your hand. 
oh, I'm not going to steal anything, and that kind of thing, which happened in the past. Such then, it is the affection which is the essence of divine law. It is spontaneously returning God's love to him, for his love for us. And it is the, the you know, it's feeling. You know, it's a powerful feeling within, more than just thinking and being logical, although that's part of it too, that's part of the way we think. <clears throat> we shall love, thou shalt love the Lord, we shall love. We now come to the glorious object of that demanded affection. You shall love the Lord your God with every breath. Because breath is what we are. God said, let us make man in our, in our image, and he breathed into man the breath of life. With every breath. Now, God uh, is, uh, the Lord God is uh, Jehovah, the self-existing one, according to, so we are loving the self-existing God. We are not loving anything else, anything less than that. He, ex he doesn't need anything. We need our air, every breath. We need food, clothing, shelter, and transportation. So we need these things. God gives it to us. Breath is the main thing. It's the first thing. Well, it's the second thing God did. First, he formed man from the clay of the earth. Then he breathed into him, gave him existence. It's to be. God breathes. He's to be in the sense of existence. And uh, when he created, it, uh, God created, you know, Vereshit Bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And his spirit, his breath, which is part of the word spirit, although the Yahweh is another uh, word for spirit. But his breath settled over the waters in the very beginning. No. And then God said, like, we'll get into that a little bit more. Now, this breath that God gives us, it's also defined as a blast of breath. God breathed into man the breath of life with all power. Going into them, not so powerful, though it's, you know, uh, burst the lungs. But it's a, it's a powerful uh, blast. It's, by extension, life. Life force. Spirit. The breath of life is the vital force that animates the body and shows itself in breathing. Okay. Everything comes from breath. We are what we, we, we are alive. We exist we have all our thinking and everything else comes from breath. God gives us that breath and we breathe in, the body mechanically draws in that breath that God put all over the earth. The oxygen uh, under 20%, nitrogen about 78% and some other rare gases, other gases, not necessarily rare. So we breathe this in. This is the breath of our life. And this breath first goes to the brain and the brain thinks and does things. We move and everything else because we have the breath of life in us. We need food, shelter, and shelter, transportation. But the breath that makes us move and everything is goes into our lungs and, and travels from the lungs to all the uh, arteries. And from all the arteries goes to every single cell in the body, to our muscles to move, to our brains to think, first think, uh, and everything else to see, to hear, all of our senses are based on that oxygen, that breath of life. We need breath to speak, to fix things, to fix themselves in the mind of the hearer. When, we, when God speaks, he fixes himself in the mind of the hearer. If a person is listening closely and entirely, uh, we com God communicates the ways of life, the kingdom of God, and love. We need the breath. God gives us the breath and to enable us to love him as he loved us. God said light, and that lights up our mind with who God is, the self-existing one, the only one that has given us the creation and the love that grows out of that creation, grows out of that person 
that create it. Thank you for watching and listening. Amen.